Howdy my totally as always tubular gamers and we're back with you guessed it another ranking video and today's is going to be a little different from the norm today we're going to be looking at the dark pictures anthology but we're not going to be looking at just the dark pictures anthology we're actually going to be looking at the dark pictures anthology the quarry and until dawn now for the uninitiated all of these games were developed by supermassive games a british game studio and all of them are basically interactive dramas now, Supermassive Games, over the years, they've actually made a number of games. They started out in the PS3 era and made just kind of some shovelware and DLC for Little Big Planet, but they've really come into their own, especially over the last couple of years, with all of these horror interactive dramas, and that's really become their identity. Really, horror has become the studio's identity, and you know, they've done a couple ports here and there, and they've actually done some other horror games that aren't featured in this video, but they're all VR titles, and they all play decently different from the games I'm looking at today. And really, that's what links all of these games together, is the gameplay, because obviously Until Dawn and The Quarry are not part of the Dark Pictures, but when it comes to its gameplay, themes, and just general setup, it is very similar to the Dark Pictures. It was also Until Dawn where all of this got started to begin with. They released Until Dawn in 2015, and it was a very different kind of game than people had seen at the time, and it actually got a lot of critical acclaim, leading to them making, you know, the Dark Pictures, Quarry, etc. And really, all of the games since have followed a similar structure and setup to Until Dawn, where it's an interactive drama in which the player will assume control of a couple of young adults who really have to survive a pretty shitty situation. Where the gameplay is primarily cutscenes and some third-person exploration. You'll have to make some choices like a Telltale game, you'll have to do some quick time events, and then sometimes you'll be walking around and collecting some items or notes or getting some lore, and they even have these premonitions you can unlock that are there to try to help you and prevent you from getting your characters killed as all of these games have permadeath and then there's even usually some kind of narrator that'll even talk to you every chapter or so. Really, these games feel like AAA Telltale games, like they look incredibly realistic. When it comes to the presentation, they are just fantastic across all of these games. It is that adventure game style gameplay where you're exploring around an environment, getting clues. There's occasional puzzles, very minor puzzles, a lot of interactive choices, and then of course, again, the quick time events. And if you fail the quick time events, there's a lot more stakes than a game over screen like the Telltale game. Here, if your characters are dead, you can't go back, like you're, you're just screwed. And as always, this list is going to be outdated. I know they've announced two more Dark Picture games, but you know what? If I don't make it now, I don't know when I'm going to make it because they never stop making these games, it seems. So yeah, it's going to be outdated sooner than later. Now, I know these games aren't everybody's cup of tea. Some people would like more involved gameplay. They don't like that a majority of the time you still are watching the game. It is like kind of a movie. That's why they call them interactive dramas. And it really does rely on the story and its scares. Now, before we get to the list, I just want to say there will be no spoilers here. I will be going over the most basic synopsis for each game. And all of the footage recorded is like at the very beginning of these games. And if you don't even want to see the footage, you can just listen to this video also. I will be judging these games and ranking them mostly based off their story and scares, but I will still obviously, like I said, keep it spoiler free, vague, broad, and be talking about them in a basic manner. So let's just get right into it. Like, share, sub, all that good stuff. What do I think is the weakest of these games? I think the weakest game here is Man of Medan, the first in the Dark Pictures anthology releasing in 2019. Now, when it comes to this game, I feel like they were really just trying to get their footing and really understand what the Dark Pictures anthology was going to be about. Like, what was it going to play like, the themes, etc. Obviously, they had Until Dawn to go off of and what worked with that game, but this game definitely feels like a step down from Until Dawn and really almost all the Dark Pictures games. Now, Man of Medan takes place in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean near French Polynesia, and it focuses on four college students and the captain of a boat who embark on a diving trip in pursuit of the remains of a World War II era plane, and then some modern day pirates and some alleged ghost ship shows up basically. Now, the plot of this game, while it starts out okay, I think the plot just completely fizzles out by the end, and the ending really left me just kind of shaking my head and just ultimately frowning at what happened and in the end I don't think the plot to this game is actually all that good which is the main reason why this game is at the bottom of this list because I didn't really like the plot I didn't think the characters were all that good and I don't think this game was even close to scary and the problems don't end there either the pacing of this game is just all over the place like it takes way too long to get going and get really interesting or even half interesting and then the game just blows its load really fast and just way too early and then it loses its tension, it becomes predictable, you know what's gonna happen, you don't like the characters, you don't care, it's really an avalanche of problems that hit this game at the very end. 
I didn't think any of the environments were really interesting at all, and then when it came to the choices, like, it didn't really matter all that much, and for the game's bigger choices, it was, like, very obvious what is the right and what is the wrong choice. And really, by the end of it, I just didn't care. And you know, this game isn't even that long. Out of all the games on this list, this is the shortest game by far. It's like three or four hours, maybe like four and a half if you're going slow. Now, of course, when it comes to the presentation, this game obviously does look very good. All the characters look very realistic and the acting is pretty decent all around. But when I walked away from this game, I ultimately just felt dissatisfied. I wasn't really happy with how things played out and I just thought it could have been a lot better or interesting. And really, this is the only game on this list that I don't recommend. I don't really think it's worth playing. Like, I don't think you'll be satisfied. I don't think you'll get scared. I don't really just think it's an enjoyable time. Okay, so our next game is Little Hope, the second title in the Dark Pictures Anthology, releasing in 2020. Now, Little Hope is when I think that they were kind of turning things in the right direction after Man of Medan. It is set in a fictional eponymous town located in Massachusetts, and the game follows four college students chaperoned by their professor. After their bus crashes by the area, the group finds themselves trapped within the town of Little Hope by an impenetrable fog. As they explore the deserted town, the characters are pursued by things, and we'll leave it at that. This game, obviously, if you couldn't tell from that premise, is very reminiscent of Silent Hill, and the similarities don't end there, but it gets into spoiler territory, so I'm going to just stop. Now, I ranked all the Silent Hills back in October and I love them all, and so naturally I was a bit inclined to like this game, and you know, I like the story a bit more because it is kind of like Silent Hill, but similar to Man of Maiden, unfortunately, I think the ending just totally falls apart. This game does have a few things that are better than Man of Medan though. First off, the characters are actually for the most part likable, like they're at least kind of likable, you at least want to see what happens. And I think the mystery throughout the entire game is actually, again, pretty interesting. It's a shame that the game just doesn't really handle its twist all that well, and I was actually pretty disappointed at the end. I feel like it kind of just comes out of nowhere, it could have been handled better, or really they just could have gone a different direction. At least the game's pacing is pretty solid throughout, like I said I was actually intrigued, there's a good mystery here, and when it comes to the story, for the most part, it's pretty alright. Now when it comes to this game being scary, I unfortunately didn't really think it was very scary like at all, like it was a little scary than Man of Maiden, I think it got me like once, which is more than Man of Maiden, but it really just still wasn't that scary, it was more spooky than anything else, and seeing the fog, you know, I'm always gonna reminisce back to Silent Hill, and so I like the fog, but that's just kind of the fanboy in me. At the very least, exploring around is much more interesting than the previous game, it's better than the stupid boat, like the town is a lot more interesting to explore and there's a lot more variety when it comes to the locations, I actually thought it was pretty good here. When it comes to the choices and the quick time events, I also thought they were good up until the ending. There are a number of choices you make, especially near the beginning of the game, that actually really do affect later parts of the game. It's a shame that by the time you get to the ending, really none of it matters. Like, you'll get almost the same ending regardless of who's alive, who's dead, and really some of the other choices you made. And I don't mean to keep going back to the ending, but it really just hampered my entire experience. And I think maybe going in with that expectation that the ending's not all that great would make it better, but I really walked away from this game just feeling, eh. Like, it was okay, I guess. I wouldn't really recommend you seek this game out. I mean, if it's in, like, the bargain bin or really cheap or given away on PlayStation Plus or, like, Game Pass or something, then go ahead and try it. But, again, wouldn't really seek this one out by itself. Alright, so our next game here is the Dark Pictures Anthology House of Ashes, the third title in the Dark Pictures Anthology released in 2021. Now, this is the first game for the Dark Pictures where I can really say, like, wow, this is actually pretty good. Now, when it comes to this game's story and premise, it's actually very different from the other two games. It's set during the 2003 invasion of Iraq, and the story focuses on five characters, four Americans working for the US Armed Forces, and one Iraqi working for the Iraq Republican Guard, who all fall into a subterranean temple after the two parties clash during an ambush. And really, it's about our protagonist trying to find a way out of this ancient structure and cooperate together. This game's proverb really is the enemy of my enemy is my friend, which is the central theme of this game. And I actually kind of like that central theme, and I think it's handled in a very interesting, realistic-ish way here. Obviously, it's not realistic with what goes on here, but I meant the whole Iraq and US working together kind of thing. 
When describing this game's narrative and how everything plays out, this game really is one of those don't judge a book by its cover as it really did subvert my expectations. The game has actually a really great mystery to it and I really wanted to see what was going to happen. While the beginning of the game is a little slow and can seem a bit standard when it comes to military games, I really can assure you it actually does get rather interesting. And by the end of it I was actually like glued to my seat and the ending isn't a total cop out or piece of crap either, it's arguably the best part. And you know, there were a couple parts of this game that really had me rolling my eyes like a certain misogynistic character or how they all go oorah and all of that, but you know, it is the military in the early 2000s right after 9-11 and all that, so I, I guess I kind of get it. But all in all, I actually did like the plot. I really did like it by the end of it. Now when it comes to playing this game, it's obviously very similar to the other two Dark Pictures games where you walk around these small environments picking up clues and piecing everything together. I did think these environments were, again, interesting. They're much more interesting than the previous two games, and some of the premonitions you see are pretty gruesome. And then when it comes to your choices and the quick time events, they actually really do affect the game. They affect the game in a number of different aspects. There is a choice you make at the very beginning of the game that will affect the game's ending as well, which is like really interesting. And when it comes to the quick time events in this game, I'm going to just say they get a little devious and just leave it at that. Again, they subverted my expectations. Really, that was this game in a nutshell, as I was really not sure what to think of it with the whole military setting and all of that, but when I walked away from it, I was like, yeah, that was actually pretty good. The presentation has also gotten a bit better. I think the game looks even better than the previous two games. And compared to the other two dark pictures, I think this is a step in the right direction, and I actually do recommend this game for anybody who thinks it looks interesting or horror enthusiasts. And so here we have the latest in the Dark Pictures anthology, The Devil in Me, releasing just this last November. I think this is the best of the Dark Pictures games. The game's premise is again very different from the other ones. It's about America's famous serial killer H.H. H. Holmes, and you know what? That's all I'm going to actually say, because I thought this story was really good. This game is a gripping narrative from start to finish. I was really intrigued and interested, and again, just really wanted to see what would happen. The game has a very good mystery to it, and the game doesn't have a lame-ass ending either. It's no cop-out, no BS. The ending is good too, I promise. Now, when it comes to playing this game, it actually does play slightly different from the other Dark Picture games, like how this game really, it feels like, wants to be a Sony game, more so than all their other games, with very easy, basic puzzles like pushing a dumpster and a bunch of slow mantling like it's God of War or Last of Us or something, on top of all the usual super massive game stuff. And I'm not saying any of these new interactions are bad, I actually think it's welcome to the series, the more interaction, probably the better. The game features an inventory system where sometimes you can find items or a character as a special item to create a secret choice, but I'll be real, this rarely changes things and it feels like it was half implemented. I mean, I'll still give you like a C- for trying, I guess, maybe in the next couple games they'll expand on this. And then as always the game has you making choices and these choices for the most part they do matter some of them don't matter as much as they did in say house of ashes but there are a couple that do affect you throughout the entire game and then the usual quick time events as always now this game actually has some really superb accessibility options that really make it so anybody could play this game which is good i think the more people that can play these games the better now this game along with God of War and Last of Us 2 I really think should be commended for its accessibility options because I really think it's great the developers want to be inclusive towards everybody. Now when it comes to this game's presentation, it was what you'd expect, it's fantastic, the characters look lifelike, the environments look photorealistic, it's just all around great. Now something I haven't really mentioned much up until this point was bugs. Some of the other Dark Pictures games had little bugs here and there, maybe some clipping issues. This game did have a number of glitches to it. I was also playing it release, so maybe that plays a factor, but it's just worth noting. I'm sure these could easily be ironed out though. And when it comes to this game's performances, I think all of the actors and actresses did a great job. I think everyone is really good here. Now, like the last game, this game is actually kind of scary. This game got me a number of times. In fact, I would say this game got me more than all of the other Dark Pictures games combined. Like, it actually tries to be scary, and I think it actually succeeds in some sense. And after finishing this game, I actually thought that it was really quite good, and I'm excited to see where the series continues with this, because I think that the series has been just on an upward trajectory since the beginning, actually. If you couldn't tell, we really just went in release order. But I genuinely do think each game has gotten better and better in just about every aspect, and I think this game is totally worth trying. But then we have The Quarry, releasing in June of 2022, and was really framed as the spiritual successor to Until Dawn. 
Now this game obviously it's not part of the dark pictures or related to Until Dawn, it really is its own beast entirely, but I can see where the similarities are. Players assume control of nine teenage counselors who must survive their night at Hackett's Quarry summer camp amongst, I'll just say, supernatural creatures and some violent people. Now right off the bat I want to just say that the quarry has much higher production value and a much higher budget than any of the Dark Pictures anthology and you can tell from pretty much immediately. When it comes to this game's presentation it is fantastic, it looks quite a bit better than the Dark Pictures anthology and just the actor choices are a much higher degree. There's a lot of notable actors here rather than maybe just one or two, like almost all of these are well known actors. I mean they even got my girl Brenda song from Disney Channel so you know they're not messing around here. But there's a bunch of other well-known actors here like David Arquette and Ted Raimi where I was like, wow, I haven't seen these guys in anything in forever. But when it comes to the acting and really just the performances, again, it was stellar. They were all fantastic. The game is obviously very inspired by teen slashers in monster films such as Friday the 13th and The Thing. And I think the story to this game is just fantastic, honestly. I think it's really well done. I think the pacing is incredibly well done. I was very satisfied with it by the end of it, much more so than really any of the Dark Pictures games and I, I really like the mystery and the twists here and I think that the best aspect of this game's story is its characters. I think they're all really well defined and I think that they're all very interesting. Despite being a bunch of annoying teenagers, I actually thought they were pretty endearing for the most part, aside from maybe one character. I really did like all the teenagers, and I really, again, just wanted to see what was going to happen with these characters, because it was just interesting throughout. The game feels like it has a much higher ambition than any of the Dark Pictures games, and you can tell from not only the game's pacing and obviously the actors and all of that, but the game's length shows that as well. The game is like twice as long as the Dark Pictures games, taking well above 10 hours to finish but I think the pacing totally just nails it down and when it comes to playing the game of course it's very similar to all of Supermassive Games gameplay where it's played from the third person you walk around these environments mostly the camp collecting clues solving the small little puzzle and generally just trying to piece together exactly what's happening and then of course the cutscenes that you interact with where you make choices and do quick time events now I'm just going to say that there are so many ways your characters can die in this game. It just gets absolutely ridiculous with how many different ways you can just completely screw over all your characters and get them all killed. And there are a lot of choices you will make in this game that will not have an effect until like many hours down the line, more so than any of the other games. A lot of, and I really do mean a lot of these choices really actually affect the ending, which is nice. And if you want to see all of your characters live, all the camp counselors make it out alive, you're probably going to have to play through the game more than once. I really can't see someone actually beating this game on their first playthrough blind and getting everybody out alive. I certainly did it, and so I actually played through the game twice, and the second time I did and explored all the game's endings and all of that stuff, and I gotta say, I actually was incredibly satisfied with this game. I think it is actually a really great horror game. I think the game has a number of scares to it. It isn't their very scariest game, but I think that when it comes to the production values, when it comes to the presentation, the actors, the scares, the story, I think it's all fantastic. The game even has an online co-op mode, which is pretty funny, but I've always liked that the Dark Pictures and Quarry have the co-op modes because I'm always playing with somebody else, I'm never really playing these games alone, so that's always a plus. But I really do think the Quarry is one of their very best games. I think anybody who likes horror games should, to should just totally check it out. Yeah, it was pretty overpriced, I won't lie, when it was released. $70 on PS5, that's... That's a lot, and it's a lot cheaper now, you could probably get it for more than half off, and I recommend it now. Oh yeah, this game also has a banger soundtrack, I just wanted to throw that in there, I really like all the music, and again, it adds to the production value, but Quarry, definitely worth trying out. Now this one was really hard, it was really hard to choose between Quarry and this, but I really do think the best of Supermassive games is Until Dawn, I really think the first one just hit different and it hit the hardest. And you know, on most days, if somebody said Quarry was their best game, I'd probably agree with them, but not today. Today, I'm saying Until Dawn is their best game, and it's one of the best horror games out there. It was just so different from everything else when it came out. Yeah, we had like Telltale games and adventure games, but it was never so scary. It was never done in like a horror setting, and it was never done as well in my opinion. I think all of the other games are obviously good, but this game absolutely nails its atmosphere, its setting, its characters, and its vibes. 
The premise is pretty simple. Basically, you see these eight young adults all come together on this mountain known as Blackwood Mountain, and they're all just trying to chill and have a nice time, and uh, shit goes down and their lives are threatened and they gotta get out of there, and I'll just leave it at that. I think the story is actually incredibly well done. It might be the best story uh, the Supermassive's ever made. There's a lot of twists, there's a lot of intrigue. The mystery really goes on a lot longer than you would think. And I think that the game's general pacing is actually just incredibly well done. You really want to see what's going to happen. And the game doesn't blow its load super early or take too long either. I think it climaxes, you know, just at the right time. And while we're talking about sex, this presentation, it just fucks. It looks so good. Like, this game came out in 2015 and it looks fantastic. There is so much detail, the characters look so realistic, even nowadays it looks way better than like 9 out of 10 games, it still looks hella good. So, awesome presentation aside, I think the performances are all really well done. The characters are pretty well done in this game, they're all pretty douchey and a lot of them are generally unlikable and it's very clear that they were done on purpose, it's a really interesting take actually, where it's just kind of a bunch of douchey, like young adults who are all just kind of assholes to each other and you really want to see what happens to them, good or bad. And yeah, they're pretty campy, the story can be campy, but I really think that kind of campiness adds to the game's horror. Now, when it comes to this game being scary, I think out of all the games I've talked about today, this game is the scariest. It scared me more than any of the other games. And you know, a lot of them are jump scares, I won't lie, but it really did actually scare me. And I really think this game created a very tense atmosphere thanks to its excellent sound design, general creepiness, and just how the entire game is framed. It, it did scare me. It's a good scare. I really did like the twists and the turns in this game. It's definitely going to keep you on the edge of your seat and you're really going to want to see what probably happens to these characters. When it comes to the gameplay, it's very basic. It's more basic than Quarry, that's for sure. You still walk around these environments from now a fixed camera angle, interestingly enough, and there is some basic exploration you can do to find, you know, some hints and some lore and get the premonitions to see how your characters can get killed, but there's not a lot going on here. A lot of it comes down to your choices and the quick time events. The choices, really, for the most part, they matter. They don't matter as hard as, say, like Quarry or maybe the later Dark Pictures games, but they do actually matter but all of the quick time events really do matter in this game like you can just get your characters totally wiped out if you mess up on these quick time events and so in conclusion I really do recommend Until Dawn probably the most out of all of these games I might recommend Quarry a little more since it's more available Until Dawn is still only on PlayStation and since it was published by SIE, I'm not too sure what's going to happen to it. Maybe, hopefully, Until Dawn finally comes to, like, Xbox and PC, because I really do think it is worth experiencing. I think it is, again, the scariest game they've made by a long shot for me, and I really just love the vibes and the atmosphere that this game provided. I really think that this game just hits harder than any of the other games when it comes to that horror atmosphere, which is ultimately what I was kind of looking for with these games. The quarry... Don't get me wrong, it has the better characters, the better production values, the better story, probably, and the better music, but this game, there was just something about it, man. It, maybe it's because it's that first one, but it just hit me so hard, and I still find myself like thinking about it and going like, dang, that was, that was a really good like adventure game, really good horror thriller, and yeah, I think it's just worth playing. Look, I know these games aren't everybody's cup of tea, and I'm sure some people are like, I don't want to play no interactive movie, this is like friggin' Night Trap or whatever. No, this is a little bit more involved than Night Trap, but if you're going to play any of these games, Quarry and Until Dawn are the two to play, and you know what, I'm just rambling now, so I'm going to let everybody go. Have a good rest of the day, night, whatever it is, stay safe. Hope you're all good, and uh, see you later. Bye-bye.